Today, I'm gonna to show you how easy it is to use digital coloring pages in Procreate. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just open a new canvas. I've got one saved here. You can just tap the plus sign and do screen size. I have one size eight by 10 for coloring pages. I like to draw mine in that size. So that way, if you wanted to print your artwork and frame it, you can. So we're just gonna open that canvas and then tap the wrench icon and click insert a photo or insert a file, depending on where you have saved your PNG or ping file. So I have mine just saved to my photo album so I can click insert a photo. If you saved yours to your file app or maybe somewhere like Dropbox, you'll wanna click insert a file. So I'm gonna click insert a photo and the PNG format is with a transparent background. So this is essentially just line art. So what I like to do is tap that layer and rename it line art. And now the easiest way to use this as a coloring page, whoop, that auto corrected to linear, line art. All right, so I'm gonna add a new layer by tapping the plus sign and then drag that to the bottom. So now I can just color on it just like I was um, coloring on paper. So you can use any brushes. You can use a monoline brush. I have some like crayon brushes that work nicely. It depends on what kind of look you're going for. So for example, I'll just, um, I'm gonna use this palette and let's say I wanted to color one of the hearts. So I can zoom in, adjust my brush size over here and then just color right on my page. So this, brush has a lot of texture. You can layer it and you can color right within the lines. So this is the most like coloring on paper. And then if you mess up perks of doing it digitally, unlike on paper, it's really easy to erase your mistakes. So if you want a really hand colored look, I would use brushes with a lot of texture. If you want something a little more solid, there's another way you can do it. So let's clear that out. So the second way is using the reference method. And for that, what you wanna do is tap your line art layer, click reference, and now tap the layer below it. This will confine the colors as you drag and drop in color to that line art, even though you're on a new layer. So when I do this, I like to make a new layer for each color. So let's say I'm starting with this light pink. I can drag and drop that over, and then I can click continue filling and just start tapping in all the hearts or anywhere I wanna place that color. And I missed one there. And then let's say I wanna do the leaves a different color. So what I would do is add a new layer and I like to rename the layers what color they were. So if this was like a medium pink, I would call it that. And then let's say I'm going to do the leaves in blue. Then I'll grab my blue color and again, drag and drop, click continue filling and just tap in that color. I think I got them all. All right, so you can see that's much quicker, not quite as artsy, but I'm gonna show you some tricks for making it look more dimensional using that method. The third method, so we've got just straight up coloring underneath. We've got the reference layer. We're gonna go ahead and turn that off now. And then we can also use the selection tool. So I'm going to use that selection tool, click automatic. Whoop. For this one, you do have to be on your line art layer. So what I like to do is make a copy in case I don't like it. Um, and then I'm gonna stick to that top copy. I've got my backup copy there. You can then grab your magic wand or your selection tool here. It looks like a little ribbon. Then go to automatic and tap. And you might want to hold your pencil down and change the threshold. Did you see how that got more solid? It started with some white areas and it's still not perfect on the edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap again and increase my threshold even more. Whoop. 
This is my least favorite method because it's not as precise, um, but it can work well in certain instances. So let's just say that selected how we wanted it to. And then we can grab a color and pull it over. So everything else has lines, this added your color, but it's not quite as perfect on the edges. So like I said, it's an option, especially if you have little areas that are hard to get into. It's not my favorite method, but I wanted to show you that it is an option. All right, so I'm gonna delete that one out and go back to this one. Now, when it comes to coloring, I'm gonna show you one of my finished pages here. So I did this in two different color ways. So I did it like that, and you can see I've added all this texture, and then I tried it in a dark palette as well. So to do that, all you have to do for the leaves, for example, I'm gonna add a new layer above, and I'm going to tap it and apply a clipping mask. And that just means anything I draw on this layer is gonna stay on the confines of my blue of my leaves. What I usually like to do is use some kind of either textured or gradient brush. Um, I have one in my watercolor kit that works really well, but if you're on um, Procreate, try some of the airbrushing ones, any brushes you have. It's fun to play with and see what different looks you can get. So for that, let's just say I'm gonna tap in some color. So I'm on my new layer and I'm gonna add some pink to the bottom of my leaf. And if your brush is so big that it's going, you see how it's leaking onto my other leaves a little bit, you're just gonna go back to that selection tool, click freehand, circle the area you wanna add color to, and then it won't get on the leaves next to it. And then I also took some of this really dark, I'll do that teal, a darker teal, and kind of added some shading at the bottom as well, just to give it a lot of extra dimension. And so I did that for each layer, and it just kind of gives it an extra fun look, especially when you get to the end and you have everything done. So if you look at my layers, you can see I have the dark gold and then I have, um, some of my layers aren't named because I got lazy about it, but my leaves are there and then all my clipping masks are above it. So you can do multiple layers of clipping masks too. So I have my pink on my leaves on one layer and then my darker teal on another layer. So lots of layers are super helpful. And then my line art is still at the top marked reference. And one final thing that you can do sometimes, if you don't want your line art to be black, you can tap the line art, click alpha lock, and then let's say I wanted my line art to be a little darker. So I'm just gonna grab a monoline brush and you can color right on your line art and make it a darker color like that. So as you can see, coloring on iPad is super easy. It's just a matter of bringing your PNG file in and using lots of layers to either color directly on your page or use the reference option to drag and drop color. So the page I did today that went up on the blog, let's just do one more here. Um, I'm gonna do my eight by 10 and then click insert a photo and it's the top of the morning coloring page for St. Patrick's Day. So exact same concept. I've got my line art. I can add a new layer beneath and start coloring. And then you can also change your background color either just by tapping or what I prefer to do, if you've watched any of my videos before, you probably know this already, but I like to add a new layer and rename it background because I feel like I have a little more control. And then if I wanna make it a certain color, I do that. But I usually do that at the end and I start with, you know, just grabbing my colors and coloring. So if you plan to color solid, I think the drag and drop method and the reference layer is much faster. If you wanna do texture, there's one other thing you can do. And this is where it's handy to use the selection tool. So I can tap my line art layer, click selection, click automatic and say I want to color this heart. 
and that is selected. And I can even tap a new layer. Let's grab a textured brush. I'll just go ahead and use that crayon that I'm on. So I've got that selected and I still can tap a new layer. I forgot to show you this before. So you don't have to color directly on your line art after you've selected it. And then you can tap in that and still get that texture without having to be so precise about coloring in the lines. And then as soon as you tap your arrow, it goes away. So that's just another option for coloring in Procreate. I hope you found this helpful. And if you finish your coloring pages and share them online, I'd love to see them. Tag me on Instagram at Nicole. Happy creating.